What's going on guys? Welcome to Watch With Us. My name is Anthony Kazalowski and I am being video conferenced in with John Keel. So uh, obviously we all know the situation right now in the world and this is how we have to do our little bit of uh, our video conferences now. Yeah, we, uh, we planned for you to come out here, uh, what, like two weeks ago? Right, right. Things started getting locked down. You're obviously, you live in New York City, you live in Queens, so you know, you're kind of the epicenter. So um, I think you were much harder hit much more quickly than we were out here on the island. But, you know, you were like, I'm not coming. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, it's, 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 it's interesting, because I planned on coming out to film with you on Monday. So I came out with my wife to Long Island on Friday night, and we were just going to hang out at my mom's for the weekend. And then this happened. So I made, I've been out to my apartment a couple times to pick up some stuff, but I've been staying out on Long Island, but because my mom's a little bit older, she'll kill me if I say that, you know, I got to be super careful about, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, who I see and how often I'm going out. So, yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, I got to tell you, your, mo your mom's super young at heart, man. She's, she's a, <laughs> she's a whip. She's an absolute whip, man. So no, it's, it's understandable. You know, my folks, uh, my folks only live, uh, they're, about a mile and a half from my house and about a mile from here in my office. And I think I've seen him twice in the last couple of weeks. And it was kind of like I drop stuff on the driveway and, right. and take right. off because you know what? I mean, you just, you got to be super careful, man. And, uh, you know, not for just yourself and your wife and, uh, you know, younger folks, but, but it's more about for the people around you. I mean, I'm hearing all this crazy stuff, how, you know, people can be like 50% of the people are like asymptomatic. They don't have right. any idea they have it. So, yeah. you know, like if, if I'm carrying it and I go and hang out with my parents and they might get it and that might be fatal. So right. no, you're doing the right thing, staying hunkered down and, uh, and we switch up our format a little bit yeah. and do, well, do this you know, virtually. Yeah, you know, even the big guys like Kudinki are doing stuff like this. So yeah. it's obviously, it's just what we have to do to stay relevant and uh, you know, it's not too bad. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I did a Instagram live video with the guys from Monta watch. I mean, Monta watch, Monta watch company isn't even a, like a, a news outlet, like a blog kind of thing or anything like that. And they're just doing it to have fun and to talk to people and, and kind of interact with other watch folks, you know, uh, during this whole thing. So that right. was super fun. I think I'm pretty sure I posted that. Did I post that on my watch gauge channel or on this channel? Uh, I think, uh, I think it was, you know what? I forgot because I watched it. Now I don't remember which channel. Neither do I. So, but either way, if uh, if you guys didn't see that video, that was a fun one. Um, you know, hung out with my guys from from Monta Watch Company and uh, super great guys. We had a long, you know, I think it was like a forty five minute chat just about watches. It was a lot. Yeah, of fun. yeah, yeah. So um, we have a purpose for today's call. Um, I'm I'm hoping I'm looking at your your video here, Anthony, and it's like freezing up a little bit. I hope that. Uh, that's only on my side of the screen, but um, I can hear you perfectly. So we'll just roll with it. Yeah, I think uh, mine's freezing up a bit. I think, unfortunately, as I said before the call, I am living with a few people that are working from home and one is doing uh, editing work for yeah. HBO. So you can imagine the amount of data that, that takes up. But um, if it freezes up, it's no yeah, problem. Lucky for you guys, you don't have to see my face. You just get to hear my, uh, my thoughts. So. No, you're seeing these great screenshots of you like, you know? oh, God. <laughs> so it's fun for me. So yeah. uh, what are you wearing today, brother? What watch you, what, what watch you have on your wrist? So I am wearing my Panerai 312. Uh, I would show it, but I'm sure it's not going to come up. <laughs> but you know what? Um, I, I, up until the last few weeks, I haven't been wearing this too much, but uh, I decided to wear it much, uh, much more recently. And I've been wearing it, I think, three or four days straight now. And I'm really falling in love with it all over again. I mean, it's definitely the biggest watch I own, but there's just something about it that I really like. Yeah, I, I love that piece. Uh, you know, we'll put in a still shot of it, you know, to edit it in so everybody mm -hmm. can see what it is. But, um, <clears throat> you know, it's it's one of my favorite watches that you own. So, uh, and that one, it's got special meaning to you. We've talked about it in other videos, but that just yeah. happens, to be one, happens to be one of my, my favorite watches you own. I love that watch. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It's, it's the only watch that I sold and bought back because I regretted it. But um, yeah. what, are you, what are you wearing today? Cassio, baby. I, uh, yeah, this is, um, this is the all black one. It's got the camouflage bezel. Um, it's just cool. I've, I've fallen in love with these Cassiokes, man. The, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm an authorized, uh, G-Shock dealer on watch gauge. And what I tell you, I'm getting these in so sparsely. I think I'm getting like two or three at a time. Mm. The black one that everybody's been clamoring for, I just yesterday got, and they're already sold out. I got three pieces in; they're gone. They 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 sold before I put them up on the website. Um, you know, I had a couple guys, you know, 
for on like a waiting list for them. I wish I can get a thousand of these things in the different variations because right. they, they're selling like crazy. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you have the ability to get your hands on one of these for $99 or $110, whatever they are, it is such a cool, fun watch to wear. Um, I've, I think Ricardo has that super bright red one. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a fun watch. It's, it's really just a fun, cool looking piece. And I have to be honest with you as a, as a former Audemars Piguet Royal Oak wearer, you know, mm-hmm. it's got that look to it with that yeah, bezel. Yeah. I, I just dig it. I really yeah. dig it because because I'm a huge AP fan. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. So the news of the day, the reason we're that, that prompted our call is is what, my friend? Why don't you break it? Yeah. So Rolex has announced that they're going to be postponing um, pretty much indefinitely uh, all their new releases for 2020. Um, mm. There's been a lot of speculation that Patek Philippe is doing it as well, but Rolex has made it official. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. And I think it leaves a lot of speculation of what, what that really means and what's going to happen for the rest of the year for the watch industry being that Rolex really is the trend center. So, yeah, I mean, so look, I mean, we did a video early on um, about the possibility of Basel being canceled. Then right. Basel was canceled. That seems then like I, <laughs> and I think in one of our videos, we've talked about if these watch companies are going to stay open and making watches during this and boom they you know a lot of watch companies closed including rolex (laughs) tudor and patek Mm -hmm. um tudor also is also not going to be releasing anything new as well so it's it's tudor rolex and uh and patek and rolex came out with the official statement i i did rip this from one of i think they got this from the rob report or one of the other blogs um but the official statement is following the cancellation of basel world 2020 in March, due to the COVID-19, we have announced that we would unveil our new products at the end of April. Given the global impact of the virus, we have decided to postpone that announcement to a later date. We have not currently identified new timing for our releases, but we will get back to you in due course with further information. Our priority at this time is to stand by the people with whom we work and to bring help and support in the best way possible. <coughs> Officially signed Rolex. Hmm. So look, I mean, first thoughts, what do you, I mean, my first, just my first thought really quickly is that good on them. I think that's a, I think it's a smart move, um, not coming from a business standpoint, but from a socially responsible standpoint. Yeah. I think with so much going on right now, it's really not many people can really not, not to say they can justify spending the money, but they really have to focus on other things right now. Um, and also, to be honest with you, it's, it's a lot like the kind of film industry right now. It's, you don't want to really put out your movie right now because it's not going to do that well based on everything. So why not postpone it to when things are a bit better? It's, it's just a smarter business move too, I think. So Yeah. You know, I think coming from the standpoint, starting to think a little business-wise on it, I think, um, you know, look, Rolex is – Rolex and Patek and Tudor – they're all privately owned. In Rolex and Tudor's case, they are actually a not-for-profit. Um, and I'm sure they've got gobs and gobs of money that mm-hmm. they're sitting on. So I, I, I don't think this will impact them as a company. Mm-hmm. Um, Patek is probably arguably one of the, you know, just, just I'm just spitballing here from my thoughts, probably arguably, arguably one of the most financially sound com- uh, watch companies out there. So I'm sure they'll be fine. Right. You but uh, not to, uh, you know, go off track much, but it is interesting because Patek Philippe has okay uh, online sales. Yeah. Which has not done. So it is interesting, you know, the two biggest brands in the world and their different perspectives of how to run business during, during this crisis. But are they, are uh, they, are they doing online sales through their retail network? Or are they doing it through themselves? They do it through the retail network, correct? Right, right. Right. And it's only, it's not every single piece. I mean, you're not hopping online and buying a 5711. So. <laughs> right. Well, cause the, you wouldn't be able to walk in and get one either. Um, right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, and the good news there is that authorized retailers who, for Pat, for Patek or Patek, um, look, man, they can send out email blasts to all their clients saying, look, we've got our pieces online. We're going to get the watches to you. So they're still as a retailer, That's huge because a lot of these retail stores are closed. I think most of them that I know of are not opening their doors for regular business yet. Yet, if they have the ability to sell watches online in an authorized manner, which wasn't previously approved, 
they could still generate income and pay their employees. And, you know, when this thing's all over, turn the lights on and, and still operate, no problem. You know, it's, it's a scary time because, you know, we're around 90 days since December and a lot of bills are getting due right now for a lot of these retailers. So, you if know, not past due. Right, right. There, you know, obviously there's forgiveness right now with the state of everything, but I'll tell you what, most retailers are still operating, you know, kind of behind closed doors now. They're able to ship watches and, and being able to have uh, an online sale where you can process through your, through your store, your boutique helps them so much. So I think that's awesome on Patek to allow that. Uh, what, you know, the thing is whether they'll allow that once the economy is booming again, uh, I'm not sure, but I think right now it's a smart move and I think it really helps the retailers. Yeah, well, that's the thing is, is again, from a social responsibility point, standpoint of, you know, of the retailers that have supported them for many, 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 many years and done their job, you know, this is kind of like their way to help those retailers continue to stay in business. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that it's, I just think it's a smart move. I think it's a, it's a show of a, of a solidarity between them, you know, and to be honest with you, I'm a little disappointed that Rolex is not allowing that um, for, yeah. the, for the retailer. Not, I mean, I can care less personally. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not selling them and I'm not in the market to buy one, but you know, from the retailer standpoint, I'm friends with a lot of, a lot of high-end retailers who sell Rolex and Patek. And, you know, if I was a Rolex retailer, if I, you know, if I would talk to any of my Rolex retail friends, I'd be disappointed in them for not allowing the online sales. You know what I think it is? I think most of the Rolex pieces are still being sold with the stores closed. I think, uh, you know, right. for, for the people I know, most of the watches that people are still buying right now are Rolex pieces. So Rolex is still seeing uh, these pieces turn over. So that's why they're not forced to do so. I mean, if they really did it, perhaps it would uh, help with sales like, a, you know, a 31 millimeter uh, steel and gold day just or something like that. But again, you know, it's those really desirable pieces that everyone wants. But uh, yeah, you know, Rolex has just that power where they don't have to answer to anyone and uh, they kind of do what they want. And they have such a great track record with business. It's almost you got to respect whatever they do because no, yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of things I've questioned in the past about how they operate, but obviously they know a hell of a lot better than me. Right. Um, <laughs> because because <laughs> they both. are what they are. They, they, yeah. Yeah. So good point. That's a really good point. But um, what do you what's interesting is like you know, any, any designs have been in the works usually for, for many years. So what's, let's just say hypothetically, they don't release anything till 2021. Are they going to completely push every release back by one year or is next year just going to be a, a, an increased amount of designs? You know, it's, it's, it's a good question. I think um, my, my personal thought is I, I don't know that, it's really going to impact anything too largely, right? Like, so think about, think about if they had, all right, we have these eight watches being released this year, this eight, next year, this eight, next year. I don't know how many pieces they have yeah. each year. But, you know, in the scheme of things, because they plan out for so long in advance, you know, they might drop one or two of those models and say, you know what, they, they might have some more, um, some more thought on it. And, you know, mm -hmm the trends might be changing, whatever it may be. And they might drop a couple models. They might add a couple models. They might pull something from next year's release into this release coming up and push sure. something else back. Who knows? I mean, I just don't think, I don't think it's going to impact exactly what they're doing or what they've done, you know, what they plan on doing. It's not going to be that big because, sure. because, because they are planning so far in the future and, sure. and they don't release 50 models a year. You know, it's not right. like uh, no, not like G-Shock or Timex or something, right? Sure. Well, I think, I think the positive thing is, I mean, let's face it, any sought after uh, Rolex piece right now that are slightly obtainable, you need to have a relationship with the, with the dealer. Now, let's just say you have a relationship with that dealer and you normally get one of those sought after pieces, but it takes months because, you know, maybe that retailer has a client that spends millions of dollars a year and they get the watch first, which I understand. But now that the piece is going to be pushed back around eight months, they can, they're still making these pieces. Perhaps when they gets released now, they're going to have a certain amount that they can maybe send to the retailer. So maybe they'll be delivered a bit quicker than, you know, originally. So, I mean, that, that could be the positive there, I think. Yeah. I mean, you may, you brought up an interesting point before we got on the, before we actually started recording is that you think that you think the pricing is going to start easing up. Yeah, I think uh, especially for the secondary market, 
um, I put up a video on, on my other channel and it, it received a lot of traction. <laughs> a lot of people get extremely angry when they're behind a keyboard. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I, a lot keyboard of cowboys, we call them. Exactly. Exactly. Some, for the first time I had to block someone because they were just cursing me out and I, I didn't really understand why, but congratulations. <laughs> yeah. He, he might be one of those gray market resellers and that's why he was so upset. But what, and this is not rocket science and I'm not, I'm not, trying to claim that this is a new idea that I'm coming up with. But when the market drops, everything drops with it. And the, usually the first to go are luxury items that you don't need. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be able to get a 5711 Patek Philippe for under retail. I'm not saying you're going to be able to walk into a store and get a Rolex Daytona at retail right off the, you know, the counter. But I will say, you know, these, these pieces having a 200% markup on the secondary market that will change. And pieces that were not desirable three, four, five years ago that are you're on waiting list now, you will see those in the case. You will see Explorer 2s. You will see Air Kings. You will see Date Just 41s. I can almost guarantee that. The, you know what? It's, it was almost like a trickle down um, uh, kind of uh, uh, market right now where the first hot piece from Rolex was always the Daytona. You can never get it. Yeah. Then after that with the Pepsi and the GMTs, you couldn't get those. Then the sky subs. dwellers. The, and then, then it was the green sub and then you couldn't get the green sub. Now it's all subs. Now it's all stainless steel models. Then it was even date just 41s. So I remember even buying a date just 41 from a retailer brand new and I got 20% off. And these are pieces that you can't find anymore. So yeah, I you think, we spoke about that in one of the prior videos because back when I was in retail, I left retail right. like five years ago. Mm -hmm. You couldn't give away date just. I don't care which model. And when somebody wanted to buy one, you were almost like, really? <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so, so when you said, you know, a couple of videos back, maybe three months ago, four months ago, that date just you couldn't even get, I, I was like, come on, dude, you're pulling my leg. And you're like, no, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some that are more desirable than others, sure. like a Jubilee bracelet with a fluted bezel. Um, but for the most part, I mean, um, you can't find them. And I do think that's where the market's going to change. And you're going to start to see those in cases again. You're going to start to see, you know, some of the uh, less desirable stainless steel pieces like mill gouses are super hard to come by. There was a time that I was wondering, I'm like, when is Rolex going to discontinue that? Because they don't sell that well anymore. Right. So, yeah. And then, it, but even like, uh, what was it? Like the Explorers. I mean, Two or three years ago, you know, John Carlo and a couple other guys were like with these Explorer junkies. And again, when I was in retail, if somebody came in and tried to trade in a five or 10 year old Explorer, I was like maybe giving them two grand for it. If right, that. Right. And I would sell it for three and be stoked about it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it would take two or three or four months to sell it for 3000. So like sure. the fact that those things got stupid hot was a, like a major surprise to me back three years ago. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to disagree with you a bit um and we'll we'll see in a few months or in a year what actually pans out and i bet you're probably right but i don't think you're going to see a softening on any of the steel sport models uh especially the subs the gmts daytonas things like that um i don't know about like the milligausses and the explorers and things like that i, I doubt sure. they're going to soften too much i doubt they're going to end up in cases in a retail store um the day just I'm um, personally have never been and I'm not a fan of. So I can imagine those things sitting in a case because personally, I just, I, I can't imagine why they're hot, but, and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody who loves them. I mean, everybody's no, got their it's, taste. You know, personal preference. But I, I don't know. I think, I think especially with the factory shutting down, you know, them halting production for a while. And I get it, man. They make 8,000 watches a day or something like that. And I get, they can ramp right back up. I just, don't imagine the market getting too soft for them. Uh, sure. And I certainly don't want to agree with the guy that you had to block, or I don't want to agree with any gray market dealer because I don't have any affinity for them. But, um, you know, I think, uh, I don't think it's going to change much. And I don't think it's going to, mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't think it's going to change with Patek, you know, particularly because they are allowing the online sales and, I think well, I think um, I still think there's going to be a premium for a lot of these prices, but I have already seen, you know, a Blue Dial 5711, and I talk about it a lot because I used to own it. I had right. it for four years. Yeah. You know, at one point they were reaching a maximum of around eighty thousand dollars. That is a two hundred and fifty percent markup. Right. I see a a very um, reputable, uh, you know, 
not a gray market dealer because he, he sells pre-owned, so it's not gray market. Right. But he's selling one box and papers in okay condition, and it was up two weeks ago for sixty thousand. Now it's at fifty-two thousand. Right. So I think that um, you know, that's just kind of that's kind of where we're at. It's starting to drop, and I think I do think eventually the market's going to boom again, and everything's going to yeah. come back up. But I was just right I was now, just going to yeah I was just going to make that point. I think. I think if it's softening up at all at this point, I think it may be because a lot of people who would typically go out and buy a fifty or eighty hundred thousand dollar watch or, you know, pay premiums on a stainless steel sport model Rolex. I think those folks are a little less certain with the economy, with their finances. I mean, a lot of these people are business owners whose businesses may or may not be allowed to even operate at this point. If so, they're operating at a, a much lower scale. I think personally, my feeling is that's where the market is softening. I don't think sure. it's, I don't, I think once this passes, this Corona things passes, the world opens up again, people are going back to work. I, I do believe business is going to go bananas. Yeah. Personally, I mean, I'm not a stock market guy. I think the stock market's going to bounce right back to where it was mm -hmm. uh, for the most part. And I think people are going to start buying like crazy. I mean, I think, I think you're going to have a hard time getting into restaurants. I think you're going to have a hard time finding anything desirable in stores because people are so house locked and so, sure. you know, like ready to bounce, right? Like I know, I know for a fact, once this is all over and done and once the threat is gone, I plan on having the biggest damn party at my house I've ever had uh, just <laughs> yeah. to, just to celebrate. And I think people are going to do that both with family and friends and whatever. And I also think they're going to do it with their pocketbooks. And I think I bet you, in my opinion, the market's going to bounce. The, the market for Rolex and Patek's and everything else is going to bounce back. And it may be even more hard to find and more expensive to get them at after this is all done. And, and who knows? I, it's really, I agree. I agree to an extent, but I do think that unfortunately, I mean, and I am definitely no MD, so I really don't know actually what the hell I'm talking about here. Nobody but I is. Do, wait, wait, hold on. The, the expert on all this is Karen from the internet, right? Is that all the yeah, names I exactly. see, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I do think that unfortunately when things start to reopen, it's not going to be like a hard open and everything's back to normal one day. Um, just from unfortunately when I'm watching the news, um, you know, it just seems like what the White House is saying is that this could drag out. You know, sure. this, could, this could be, you know, we'll have to open up and maybe we can get testing for people. And if you've been exposed, then you can go out. So I don't think it's going to be, you know. Oh, like I agree with you there. I, I think I don't think it's going to be like, hey, one day, you know, hey, everybody's allowed out. And next thing you know, the stores are packed because it's going to be different areas of the country. It's going to be different areas mm -hmm. of the world that open up. It's going to be a rolling thing. But I think four to six months after everything comes back to normal and God willing, this stuff doesn't drag on and there's not relapses and all that. I do right. think six months down the road, it's going to be a stronger market, uh, not only the watch market, but everything. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot more buying out there. Uh, it's six months after that everything is done. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do agree that when this is in the rear view mirror, whether that be th three, six months from now, a year, year and a half from now, whenever that may be, I think the market's going to be booming. I think people will be right back to where we left off. And I think that people are just going to be so appreciative of having life back and really valuing, you know, certain things. They're just going to be happy. And, and, look, and that's going to lead to sales. Look, I'm going to be so much more happy to see your, your mug in person <laughs> than I was before all this. Right. Right, and right. It's just people are going to have more appreciation. The one thing I keep thinking, I keep hoping, I keep talking to people about is my, my hope is that, Although this is awful, especially for those people it's affecting financially and medically or for like long-term impacts. I mean, obviously that's awful and we don't want to see any of that. But I think afterwards, I'm praying and hoping that, that the world changes a bit, right? That yeah. people, people appreciate each other a bit. You know, I, I go so far as to say, I hope we all come together a bit more and stop right. arguing on differences. I think everybody wants the best for their friends and family. And, um, you know, hopefully there's more love in the world than there has been. Yeah, you know? no, I agree. You know, so I look, I, I think it's interesting. So, you know, just to kind of recap, Rolex, Tudor, Patek, they all closed their factories a few weeks back. They're not producing anything. They just announced that uh, they're going to not release any new products for the foreseeable future. There's no hard date on it. I did read one thing, you know, that was published this morning that Patek hasn't released an official statement yet. So I expect mm -hmm. that to probably come soon. Um, but it's interesting, man. There's an interesting interest. You know, just, just 
unprecedented times. And, you know, we've, I'm going to say it over and over and over. And I've said it in every video that I've done. Anytime I talk to anybody, you know, our main goal here is to divert everybody's attention from the crap and the shit that's mm -hmm. going on. Talk about watches. We're hoping for the best and praying for the best for every single one of you. And uh, look, I mean, I'm going to throw this out here too. Uh, I want to start doing more videos, um, particularly now because everybody has the time because yeah. I think it's a great diversion for people. So I'm going to offer to any brand owners out there, any industry people, any collectors, if you guys are interested in doing a watch talk, yeah. whether it's with me, Anthony, Ricardo, or anybody, uh, reach out to us. I'm going to, the best email for that, email me at jk at www.media.com. Say, hey, I'm interested in doing a video and we'll, we'll converse and we'll figure it out and we'll, we'll do videos together. So I don't, I don't care if you're a collector, if you're a brand owner, if you're whatever, if you're a store worker, and if you want to talk about watches, reach out to me, you know, we'll connect you with me, with Anthony Ricardo, with somebody, and we'll have a cool conversation and put it up on the channel. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, man. So listen, stay well. Say you hi too, to mom. Man. Yeah. Will do. <laughs> yeah. Give her a big hug. And um, listen, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Leave comments, thank you guys. comments below, questions, anything you guys want to hear about, talk about. Uh, look, we're here. We want to talk we're about here. watches. That's it. That's right. It. We'll, and, uh, we'll be putting up more videos uh, next couple of weeks of uh, just conversations. And uh, you know what? Uh, when you guys write in or ask questions, it, it helps. So if you even have some uh, some questions, shoot uh, shoot John an email, and then we can make a video with some uh, viewer questions and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. We did an ask me anything for a little while. Ask us anything. And mm -hmm. so if you guys have questions, ask us anything. We'll we'll yeah, talk about anything sure. watch related. You know. Um, yeah, so make sure you like this video, please. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit the bell icon below because that will actually alert you every time a new uh, video comes up on, on the Watch With Us channel. Uh, make sure you go over to Instagram. Follow our Instagram because Ricardo does a kick-ass job with that Instagram yeah, account. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, so always a pleasure, guys. Anthony, it's good to see you. Likewise, John. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, and uh, hopefully this is over before we know it. Yeah, you too, brother. And uh, right, everybody man. watching, God bless you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll, uh, we'll see everybody on the other side of this. Take care, guys. All right. Bye. Later. Don't...